Hello and welcome to One Minute Theatre Reviews. I'm Paul Severn Lewis. This is the Ambassadors Theatre and I'm here to see Mike Bartlett's cock. If you've seen the title and you think this is going to be some video about male sexual parts, switch off right now. Or actually, if you wouldn't mind staying for a minute, it will help my YouTube analytics. But hopefully, you're here because you're interested in the new production of Mike Bartlett's Cock at the Ambassador's Theatre with Taryn Edgerton and Jonathan Bailey. Even so, I want to make clear from the start that the cock of the title does not refer to a penis, although there are quite a few references to penises in the play. It alludes to a cockfight, because this is about a love triangle in which two people both want a third person as their lover, and he struggles to make his mind up between them. Also, while I'm making things clear, although this is a play about an ostensibly gay couple in which one of them finds himself attracted to a woman, and interesting questions are asked about how we define people's sexuality, how they define themselves, and whether we should be defining at all, it's primarily a comedy with much of the humour triggered by this apparent need to define sexuality. And since you ask, although sex is referred to regularly throughout the play, and it is quite erotic at times, the actors keep their clothes on. Sorry if that disappoints you. And use stylized movements to indicate physical activity. I'm pretty sure no intimacy advisor was needed on this production. Anyway. There are two star names in this play, so let me start my review with their performances and say that both earn their place on this stage. And not because they're celebrities, but because they're damn good actors. So, the actors alone make this a show worth seeing, but the production is impressive. And as for the play, well, it's funny a lot of the time. It lectures some of the time, and it's not as deep as I suspect it thinks it is. Anyway, that's the one minute review, but keep watching because I've more to tell you about this play, including the performances, Marion Elliott's uh, direction, the terrific set and lighting, and why this production, while good, didn't quite hit the heights it should have. Taron Egerton is best known for his performances in the films Rocket Man and Kingsman, but he is rather trained and has appeared at the National Theatre. He is the unnamed M. Uh, that's M for man. He gives a nuanced performance. M appears to be the dominant lover in a long-term relationship, and Mr Edgerton plays to perfection this swaggering character who hides, in a very masculine way, his need for love. He has a wonderful ability to switch from a jaw-jutting bully to a soft and tearful lover, and he delivers lines of waspish humour with a lashing tongue. Now, Jonathan Bailey is one of the many ridiculously attractive people from Bridgerton and is destined to become the central character in the second series. He's even the cover star of this week's Radio Times. And he too has a good track record in theatre, including an Olivier Award. He plays M's partner, the only character given a name, John. Well, I know that's not much of an ID. Um, his character is painfully indecisive. I mean, it's painful for him and for us. Mr Bailey provides many enjoyable and excruciating moments of comedy as he grimaces his face and contorts his body in a childlike way when avoiding making his mind up. If anything, there's just a little too much goofiness in his portrayal. We know he's suffering because there are moments outside of the action when he's alone and bathed in harsh light, screaming silently. But in his interaction with the other characters, he doesn't show, I think, quite enough of this angst. Both actors are physically right for the parts. Mr Bailey, thin and gangly, Mr Edgerton, stocky and muscular. Not quite Laurel and Hardy, but it would be hard to imagine either playing the other role. What you first notice when you enter the auditorium is Merle Hensel's impressive set. It's uh, chrome or some similar polished material curved round the sides and back of the stage. There's no escaping it. There are no distracting props and the one way in and out is a concealed revolving door. All that happens is reflected in on itself, conveying the way these characters are trapped in their relationships and unable to see beyond them. 
There are some hanging fluorescent strips which come down from time to time, and these, along with other lighting changes from dark to brilliantly bright, orchestrated by Paul Constable, match and enhance the mood changes. First we meet Em and John. They're relaxed in each other's company. There's a lot of affection there, but there's also quite a bit of sniping and bickering. And anyone who's been in a long-term relationship will recognise how natural this is, because it's easy to get into negative ways of behaving. However, there is a problem with this relationship. The cliché of the seven-year itch, perhaps. John has had sex with someone else. Shockingly for both of them, given that M is gay, and until now John has thought of himself as gay, the other person is a woman. M's dominating character and the way he resorts to unpleasantness hint at why John might have been tempted to stray. Um, it has to be said that while M's insults may hurt John, they're funny for us. For example, when he launches into a string of offensive terms for someone who is attracted to women. In the second act, we see how this other relationship began and developed. Jay Danuka, who you may recognise uh, from uh, BBC TV's Dark, His Dark Materials, is excellent as the woman John has an affair with and falls in love with. Her character is called W for woman. Get it? There isn't so much potential for comedy in this part, but Ms Anuka exudes the love and need for love of her character. John uh, shows a hilarious nervousness and bewilderment uh, but also clear attraction. And there's a gentleness and respect between them that wasn't apparent in John's relationship with Em. But of course, he is still attracted to Em. And Jonathan Bailey is at his comic best when he's confused about what he wants beyond wanting to please everybody. I think it's his indecisiveness that enables his lovers to mould him into what they need. And this is a good point to mention the way uh, John and W first make love. As I said earlier, there's next to no physical intimacy beyond a, a kiss or a hug. They keep their clothes on. You'll also remember that I said the set is bare of any props. So, much of the physical action is left to your imagination. For example, a whole meal is served in the third act without any sign of a table, a bowl or cutlery. But going back to this first encounter between John and W, they indicate through the dialogue what they're doing, while staying physically separate on the stage. She wants to see his naked body, so he moves his hands to indicate the shedding of clothes, without literally miming taking off each item. They describe uh, him exploring her vagina, but what we see, uh, from memory anyway, is him touching his own leg, while she uses her body to express the excitement she's feeling inside. This Exploration of each other's bodies is actually highly erotic, um, proving perhaps that the best sex is in the brain. I congratulate director Marion Elliott for utilising this remarkably effective element and the movement director Annie Lunette Deacon Foster for making it work so well. This and the set and the lighting could only happen in a theatre and they all contribute to a complete experience that enhances what's said. Uh, talking of which, Mike Bartlett has an excellent ear for dialogue, uh, just the exchanges you'd expect both from long-term relationships and a first meeting. If I have a criticism of the production, it's that it looks too good. It's so stylish with its cold, encompassing metal and its stylized movement that it somehow takes away some of the raw feeling from these relationships. The third act is the cockfight. M invites W to join him and John for dinner. It feels contrived, but it does give us the showdown we want. M brings along his father for good measure. He's called F, of course, and is played by Phil Daniels in a performance that shows the parents blinkered affection, he wants his son to be happy, um, and gives us insight into the limitations of both liberal tolerance and a view that defines people by their sexuality and gender. As I've already said, the play questions pigeonholing people. So it's interesting that there is a gender and sexuality consultant on the creative team and a whole page in the programme devoted to LGBTQ plus terms and their definitions. I think John might have fared better with today's increasing acknowledgement of fluidity. Anyway, 
M and W each think John has chosen them and is going to take the opportunity to reject the other. As the evening progresses, there's verbal sparring, very funny, and increasing emotion as it becomes clear how much each of them needs John. He, meanwhile, continues to be pulled one way and another, both by his feelings and by what box he should tick, with the possibility that it's all cock, as in cock and bull. It's a dramatic conclusion. Now, the play itself may lack some depth, but as a look at the way our hearts break the rules set by our brains, it's full of humour and insight, especially in the hands of this starry cast. I give Cock by Mike Bartlett at the Ambassador's Theatre three stars. I can't tell you how hard it was to get through this review without resorting to schoolboy innuendos. But let me end by giving you one. Mike Bartlett may be cock of the West End, uh, with two premieres coming up this summer, but his cock isn't very long. It's only one hour and three quarters, with no interval. But as we know, it's quality, not size, that matters. And with that, goodbye. If you found this review useful or entertaining, or both, and you'd like to be the first to see my future reviews, please subscribe below. Do like and comment and share. And if you want to read my reviews, please visit oneminutetheatrereviews.co.uk. Thank you for watching.